In this chapter, we will be discussing the first law of thermodynamics, the law that governs the transformation of energy from one type into another. The first law of thermodynamics is used in many fields, from physics to chemical, mechanical, and even aerospace engineering, to the life science and the chemical sciences. Of course, in this chapter, we will be focusing on the application of the first law to chemical and biological systems. In today's lecture, we will deal with the origin of the first law, briefly commenting on the thermodynamics of living cells and why we focus so much on the behavior of gases in thermodynamic descriptions of various systems. We will emphasize the importance of the concept of energy and provide a number of important definitions for terms that make up the thermodynamic language. We will then discuss general thermodynamic processes in pure substances and highlight the key features of a process, which are the heat and the work. This discussion will make us recognize the importance of specifying the nature of the boundaries between a system and its surroundings. We will examine the microscopic nature of work and heat and make sure we learn the sign conventions used in chemistry for these quantities. We will conclude this lecture with a qualitative discussion of the work and heat associated with chemical reactions. As a scientist, I have come to realize that to understand thoroughly a new field, it is very useful to examine its history. The modern history of thermodynamics, and especially that of its first and second laws, dates back from the time of the Industrial Revolution and the attempt to make more efficient steam engines. Sadi Carnot, a French engineer, wrote when he was 28 years old a landmark book titled Reflections on the Motive Power of Fire. In this book, he provided the first mathematical description of the workings of the heat engine, explaining how heat generated by the combustion of a fuel, such as coal or wood, could lead to the production of mechanical work, compression of a gas, for instance, and the loss of heat to the surroundings. His book was an excellent guide for the development of more efficient engines. It is interesting to note that Carnot's model of the heat engine used the caloric theory of heat, which had been developed in 1783 by Lavoisier, none other than the father of modern chemistry. The caloric theory claimed, incorrectly, that heat was a fluid of matter, called caloric, which flowed from hot bodies to cold ones. Criticism of the caloric theory was first voiced in 1843 by James Prescott Joule. It took Joule seven years to convince the scientific community that his measurement of the mechanical equivalent of heat proved that heat was not some sort of fluid, but a form of energy transfer taking place as a result of molecular motion. Joule considered that exchanges of heat were equivalent to mechanical work. In 1850, Joule's experimental work was finally vindicated when Rudolf Clausius offered the first official statement of the first law of thermodynamics and stated, in a thermodynamic process involving a closed system, the increment of the internal energy is equal to the difference between the heat accumulated by the system and the work done by it. At the same time, in Scotland, William Thomson, the future Lord Kelvin, made an equivalent claim that the total energy of an isolated system is conserved. 